Welcome back to Tara by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, well, the other day, Trump and his entourage visited the Arlington uh, Cemetery. And uh, during their visit, they were invited by some family members to go to a, uh, a separate section of the cemetery um, for um, veterans that, uh, for members of the military that were killed in Afghanistan and Iraq. And in this section of the uh, cemetery, there is legislation that's been passed by Congress that you are not to, you know, film or um, use social media, you know, be a, like a, you know, a, an influencer and use any of the social media to make like a, a campaign video or do any type of commercial or campaigning in that section. And this was communicated to Trump and his entire entourage, as well as all the families in that area. Trump decided that his photographers needed to go with him. And when a woman who works in the, uh, the cemetery impeded their path, telling them that they weren't allowed to bring cameras in and such into that section, that Trump could go in, but the videographer and the photographers couldn't, somebody in the Trump campaign um, the, the media isn't calling it this, but basically shoved her out of the way. If that's not, if that's not just, you know, putting into a microcosm of everything that's wrong with the Trump campaign, he's going there trying to get the veter the, the vote of the military and the veterans, and then he abuses the military and the veterans while they're there for a commercial campaign ad that he films in an area he's not supposed to be filming in, which is breaking the law so much for being the law and order president. And you physically uh, physically shoved a, a woman who was in the right telling you what the rules were and you didn't want to hear what she had to say. So you just got her out of the way because it was inconvenient for you. I think I've summarized it up pretty well. <laughs> And uh, pretty accurately. Now, Steve Chung, who is uh, Trump's uh, mouthpiece, he's the mouth of Sauron, and some other idiot whose name I'm not remembering right now, were saying that this never happened, and they've got the video evidence that can prove it if they need to prove it. Well, you know what? Just release the video. If nothing happened, just release the video showing nothing happened. I'm sure the news media, I'm sure you caught that that uh, altercation on video. Release it. Don't threaten to release it. Just release it. Take all the wind out. Take all the air out of this. But they haven't released it. Probably because... The video, the dash cam, the body camera video doesn't back their claim. But this is not a not a reading on whether this happened or not. This is a reading on how are vets going to feel about this? Veterans, uh, current and former members of the military, those that served, those that went overseas, those that uh, spent the last 18 months in Afghanistan and totally and utterly didn't get shot at even though it was pointed out that the, the, the headstone right next to where Trump was standing showed a death date within the 18-month period before the pullout in Afghanistan. Clearly, he must have died in a car accident or something. And just completely and utterly not shot at. But, yeah. It just, his, his campaign is spiraling out of control. He can't even do this right. Entertainment purposes only. You piss off vets, you piss off women, and you piss off the law and order crowd. <laughs> oh, for three. How are how are how are the the vets, the military folks, and such viewing this incident? Foundation of the reading, the Eight of Cups. Uh, there's a lot of them that are just going to be like, you know, they were already tired, and this is just literally the final straw. You can't you can't do this. The, the vets understand the rules. They understand what it means to follow the rules and follow the law. And, you know, just watching this guy, and not only that, Trump took a picture of him giving a thumbs up and a headstone here. Um, 
they've held they you know they've held it together for this guy they've you know they've tried to hold on to this campaign as long as they can <clears throat> but this is like the whole stolen valor thing there's only so much they can take you can how much do you want from these people they don't have much they don't have a lot to give anymore and you still take more it's just yeah the level of disrespect the two-facedness on this is is that they may not be out there protesting but that doesn't mean that this didn't hit home in the past you got the seven of pentacles you know what you you reap what you sow they've heard the stories about trump calling uh, uh members of the military losers and suckers they know he he dodged the draft five times during the Vietnam era with his bone spurs. They've watched him hire a bunch of generals that were highly regarded and then fire each one of them and then berate them as, you know, weak and, and stuff. And the generals have all acted professionally. And now H.R. McMasters has a statement out there about Trump. You know, don't elect, basically saying don't elect this guy. Current situation is the devil. They're just waking up. They're, they're waking up to the fact that Trump can do no right as much as they want him to, as much as they've defended him, gone to bat for him. He just can't do anything right because he's so self-centered. And, and then you got Hillbilly Vanilli, uh, Mr. Vance over there, who, you know, I served as a Marine and... You know, I took a bullet in my typewriter type of thing. And, you know, Trump took a bullet for the country. It's just, there's so much chaos. And, again, there might be, there's not going to be open riots with the Five of Wands there. But th this is going to anger members of the military. It just is. Why couldn't you just follow the rules? Why do you have to shove this woman out of the way? Why do you have to treat the military with disrespect like that? It's Arlington Cemetery, for God's sake. Lesson to be learned is the Three of Cups. It's just, you know, Trump talks a good game about celebrating the military, but he doesn't put his, his uh, words to deeds. And it's a disappointment. He's not who he says he is, and... If they if they were really honest with themselves, he's never been who he said he was. This won't be an and again. It's not like the entire everybody in the military is going to vote against Donald Trump. That's never going to happen. But it's just, you know, if there were guys in the military that were looking for a little bit of daylight between Donald Trump, you know, they're voting Donald Trump. Trump just gave them the daylight that they needed. Like, you know, these would be the ones that they weren't going to vote against it, but they were kind of like, you know, not going to bring it up in conversation because, you know, they're going, what do you mean you're not going to vote for Trump? How are you not going to vote for Kamala Harris, are you? You know, blah, blah, blah. Now it's going to be like, man, I really can't vote for a guy who goes in there and disrespects uh, dead veterans like that. I just can't do it. And, and it's a value choice. And you can't get a lot of pushback on a value choice like that because it's your personal values. It's like, you know, in the same argument, what, are you going to vote for Kamala Harris? She slept her way to the top. It's like, you know, I can't vote for a guy who disrespects veterans like that. They've got no, there'll be no comeback for it. Just like, oh, whatever, man, you do, you know, okay, well, you do you, but you should vote for him anyways because we need him. It's like, nah, no, we don't. Okay, so that's that's kind of how the veterans are feeling on that one. Oh, I'm curious. How does uh, Trump feel about this incident? Did he even notice? I know. I'm sure his campaign, his yes men, said nothing about it. But I wonder if somebody was brave enough or stern enough to look him right in the eye and say, Dude, what are you thinking? Of course, he would deny it anyways, right? It's her fault. I mean, their whole campaign is denying everything. The military came back and cracked back on that and issued a very stern rebuke of the Trump campaign's um, 
recollection of events. The only reason why they haven't pursued this, because it is illegal, is that the woman who got shoved opted not to press charges or pursue it further. Had she done that, we'd have a bigger issue at hand. Uh, Bell of the Fifth Column uh, did mention that, you know, in days past, this would have been the end of somebody's presidential uh, campaign. And it just makes you wonder, what does it take? What does it take to bring this guy down? And so, you know, and Susan Lynn talks about the, the five arrows, the hundred arrows and only five need to hit. This is just could be another one of those arrows that hits the mark. It's not enough to kill him, but it's enough to, to bring it to slow him down. It's enough to wound him. And it's just, it's, I think it's aggravating to you and to me because it's like, you just wonder where, for some of these people, where's the freaking bottom? Don't you have a bottom? What can he, it's like, what can this guy do to finally get you to say enough is enough? Draw a line in the sand. They'll never draw a line in the sand because they do that. They'll watch the goalposts flow right on by it. And at that point, they're supposed to walk away and they can't. They're in a cult. That's why. Um, Trump. How was Trump feeling about all this? <laughs> he's off to, he's to Lulu. He's in to Lulu land. What are you talking about? Nothing happened there. <laughs> I went there. I celebrated the uh, the fallen soldiers. I, I gave him a thumbs up and everything like that. Yeah, I just, Trump being Trump. He had a good photo op. He thinks it's going to look, the campaign ad they got out of it, he's going to be really happy with it. I'll, I'll put up a picture if I can find one of Trump giving the thumbs up because it's just, he's got that stupid smile on his face giving the thumbs up. You know the look because you'll see like a bunch of pictures whenever he's standing with somebody in a, like a press line, it's the same look. Uh, in the past, you got the two of cups. It just, um, they had came up with this great idea. He's reaching out to the vets. He's reaching out to the soldiers and, um, you know, he needs, he needs these folks to have a fighting chance in this election. You know, he's going to go fight, fight, fight. He's going to fight for them. Overarching energy is the five of cups. I don't think he understands how disappointing his behavior is, though, because he's so Delulu that he just doesn't see it. But it's going to come back to bite him because there are going to be some uh, vets who are going to be very outspoken about this man's actions. I just listened to a podcast with uh, the former Minnesota governor, Jesse the Body Ventura, former WWF, WWE wrestler. <laughs> and Jesse Ventura did not have many nice things to say about Trump. Um, especially said, you don't want to get into a name-calling match with me because you're going to come on, out on the short end of the stick. Uh, Jesse Ventura was elected... Uh, governor of Minnesota in the 90s, I believe it was. I just remember Garrison Keillor uh, from Prairie Home Companion uh, just getting into little snippety arguments with him. Garrison Keillor is like all of like five foot three, 105 pounds. And Jesse Ventura is a former Navy frogman. Uh, he's probably about like 6'3", 250. He used to do a lot of weightlifting and, and steroids and such to get really jacked up because he was working on his physique. That was going to be one of his gimmicks. And, uh, no, it's just an unlikely pair to be bickering with each other. But I remember Garrison Keillor coming up with a, uh, a, a kind of a profound statement. says, you know, Jesse Ventura could actually be a pretty good governor if he could just put like a, a 24 or 48-hour delay on something before he comments on it. You know, it's just like, because Jesse would, Governor Ventura would say what was on his mind, and then when you get more information, you have to do damage control. He was always good for a sound bite. But um, Jesse Ventura is very much an independent. He wants people to vote their values, and he just called out the Republican Party for what they were, and called out Trump for what he was. Um, I may not agree with a lot of things on politics with Jesse Ventura, but hey, at least He's calling out the bad actors in there and calling for accountability and such. He also said that uh, Governor Walls is the only governor that's ever called out and reached out to him to ask him his advice and guidance on problems affecting Minnesota. And Jesse Ventura really appreciated that because 
it made Jesse Ventura feel valued by Tim Walls. And, but I think that's also Tim Walls' superpower, is bringing people into the tent. Okay, so what did we learn from this? Vets are not going to be happy with Trump, and it's going to impact it. Trump is oblivious to it. He's just, no, he thinks he got a great commercial out of it. I don't know where the bottom is. <laughs> and we'll never see it with some of these cult members. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. Again, these readings are for entertainment purposes only. Um, vote your values. Make sure you register to vote. Get out there. Vote. Vote your values. And we'll take this uh, election back in November. Have a good night.